passed recently, a few days before Christmas, the Scandinavian flight time community lost one of their brothers. Kjell Karlsson, one of the great Norwegian tires, left us, and that, well, all too soon. As what I heard and understood by the talks we had, fly fishing and fly tying came into Shell's life at a very early age. I recently read somewhere that his first cast was made only two years old. Fly fishing and fly tying was a great part of Shell's life, but besides a great fly tire, he was also a very well known fine mechanic, creating parts for big names within the Norwegian motorsports. I tied with Shell at a few fairs and we got to know each other. I really liked talking to him, he had so many stories to tell. At one of the fairs he showed me a really interesting caddis pattern, a really buggy one. But unfortunately we didn't have the time because I would really want to see and hear more about his pattern. So I started to do some research and thanks to some of Shell's closer friends I got enough information to do this little tribute to our friend. And by being a part of spreading the word of Shell's fly, I feel that I somewhat is a part of securing that the fly tires of tomorrow also can enjoy our friend's really interesting buggy little caddis pattern, the Ludwig. Here's what we need to tie the Ludwig. First, a good solid dry fly hook. I use the Partridge SUD2. We need some thread, and I here use uh, Semperfly's Nano Silk 12O, which is kind of slippery, so I need some wax to get it to attach to the hook properly, and also to have the material sit really tight. Uh, in the dubbing loop I will create later. Uh, the material here is uh, poly yarn from Staffan Lindström. I got a few years back and it's really it's a really nice material to work with, quite uh, unlike the, the stuff that you buy in the stores today. It's more coarse and uh, gets, uh, gets the fly to look much more buggier. Uh, we have this comb here that I will use to prepare the material and also to get the fly to look as I want. I want to make it like the bugger. I will use the comb to uh, catch up uh, trapped fibers etc. I have my dubbing twister uh, which is a dubbing twister with a bearing here so it twists the thread really fast and good. So this is what we need. Now we will start to prepare the material that would make the whole fly. So we start by combing out the, uh, the poly yarn so, so the fibers aren't stuck to each other. Then we cut them in like two centimeter pieces. This is a tied on a size 12, so we need pretty much in material. There we go, that will be enough, I believe. And then we also need some, some brown for the for the works or a head part. Even that up a little bit. There we go. And then I will position this hair on this piece of paper here, it's post-it with some 
with some glue on it so it stays there. There we go. even as we can. We try to not have any fibers laying over each other here so we that, that would give, so give us some problems when we're going to spin it. And then I take my, my Mark Peter Schoen clamp, catch the fibers there, and like that. Even them up a little bit. And then I press there and that would make me be able to trap them again, comb them a little bit again. So now we're ready to put this in the, in the dubbing loop. We start by attaching our thread to the hook. And we start almost at the end of the hook. Like that. And then we cut the excess. And we take just a little piece of poly yarn to start up. Like that. Pinch and loop so we get that shell on the upside of the hook. back again and then we make a loop and we close the loop by pulling a th turn of thread around it and then we transport the thread and leave it just behind the eye of the hook like that cut that and stuck like that. And then I will use my loop twister and take the material inside the loop there. And I put the material like in the middle. Like that. And then spin the twister. Please watch carefully so you won't trap the material as, as good as we can. Get it like straight fiber so it get like a really nice dubbing brush. Sorry, poly yarn brush. And then we start to wind this material around the hook by making sure we double the material up so we get a really nice and even fly. So we start there. It's one turn. Two. Just continue until we have fill the hook really nice and tight
I will use my tweezers to just pull everything back a little bit so it gets even more tighter. Tweezer. I'll take one last time with the tracer just to so I can get everything as tight as possible here. Squeeze in some turns at the end here. Now, one more and then I'm full. Everything with a the thread there. A bit too tight, maybe. Use my tweezer again, see if I can. There we go. back a few turns there and then a whip finish thread there. And now we cut the excess there, like that, and then we start to get all those fiber so they are not like twisted inside here. go now it start to cut and I always start on the underside of the fly thinking when I'm cutting this and I cut it in like a when, it, when I'm doing like a good as cat is or similar side. Now we start to cut around to get the shape of the caddis. You can see it's starting to getting there.
and then as you people who tie like good as caddies flies you know can be sitting clipping deer hair all night long or in this case poly yarn but I think I'm quite happy with that but to make the finish of this I, I have to turn it in the vise use my brush again I will also cut it a little bit from this angle starting to getting there. Turn it again. Just even it a little bit on this side. So there we go. Shell Carlson's Ludwig. A really nice little poly yarn caddis that I believe, well I haven't fished it but I can tell just by looking at it that it is a really good floater and um, a very buggy really nice little fly.